Hey, it's Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun show about everything digital. I'm Kim Commando, and joining us this week, of course, are my friends, Ali Selgman and Ben Bradley. Hi, Ali. Hi, Kim. Hi, Ben. I'm back. Ben's back from vacay, and we're going to learn more about what Ben did and all the gear that he took along with him. And just a quick reminder to rate, review, subscribe, and follow this podcast, because that helps us find more listeners, and we always need that. Yes, and a word from our sponsor, well, it's us, because we don't have any paid sponsors yet. Womp womp. Uh, the current newsletter.com tech news and tips you can use right now. No ads. It's free. Sign up right now while you're thinking about it. Go to the current newsletter.com. And I know we produce a lot of newsletters. This is the best one ever. You're going to love it. Almost a hundred thousand people are getting it twice a week and you can too. Just head over to the current newsletter.com. All right, let's start with the news, Al. You're up first. It has been a while since we talked about cryptocurrency, which is kind of weird. Um, Bitcoin is almost back up to 50,000. I don't know if you saw this. It was down to 30 at one point. So going good there. Uh, the combined crypto market back in July, 1.1 trillion. Now it's up to 2.1 trillion. So it is not slowing down. And now we come to the bad news. You've probably heard the name Coinbase. It's one of the most popular crypto exchanges. Imagine you've got a lot of money in there. You log in and then everything's gone. Uh oh. Uh, CNBC did a report. A bunch of Coinbase users have been hacked, including a couple that logged in to see that their $168,000 was gone. It had vanished after. Wait a minute. It just vanished? It's gone? Like, I mean, like they signed into their Coinbase account and instead of $168,000, it was a big fat zero? Big fat zero. No money in there. Yes. And it's not like your bank. You can't you know, start up a chat or call and say, hey, my money's gone. What do I do? With Coinbase, all you can do is send an email. And I think we've all been stuck in a customer service email loop and know that it can take quite a bit of time. And when you're talking about that much money, that's a really big deal. So people are very much not happy with that. If you're wondering, how did this happen? SIM swapping. I know you two know what that is. And probably you do if you're listening. But Kidding. It was by SIM swapping? It was. You know what? You've got to explain what that is because it's crazy. It really is. It's basically when someone takes control of your phone number through your SIM card, usually they fool or maybe bribe somebody in a mobile carrier. And so they get a copy of your SIM card, put it into a different phone, and then, yeah, they have access to everything. So your emails, they get your 2FA codes, uh, basically anything. So yes, that's how they're doing it. Um, our pal Itai Mayor, a uh, cybersecurity genius, he said that these hacked accounts are being sold for well, 100, 150 bucks on the dark web. Not a bad deal. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you pay 150 bucks for it on the dark web and then you can get $150,000 back. I mean, I'm not a financial genius, but that seems like a really good return. <laughs> that is a good return. Yeah, quite the investment. Yeah. yeah. The other big issue is that people shouldn't be keeping that much money in Coinbase. This is not a secure wallet. I won't get too far into the weeds. Basically, there's cold wallets and hot wallets. Hot wallets are connected to the internet. Cold are usually physical uh, devices where you keep your cryptocurrencies. So okay, if so if if they don't know what a hot and a cold wallet is, if they don't know what Coinbase is, if somebody's listening right now, they're like, Ali, I have no freaking clue anything that you just said other than somebody lost a whole bunch of money. So shameless self-promotion, if I don't mind, is that Cryptocurrency 101. Just go to Amazon.com, search for Commando with a K, of course, and you want to get my book. It's under 10 bucks and you're going to learn all about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency 101. Go read it and then listen to this again and you'll say, oh, OK, great. I get it now. Um, and one final note. There are eight apps that just got kicked off the Google Play Store. They're all about cloud mining. So no, you can't mine Bitcoin through an app. And these apps really just exist to either steal some money from you or get you to watch a bunch of ads and you're not going to earn anything. So we'll put the full list up on commander.com. But just remember, you can't mine through an app. So don't even try. You know, have you heard about this? Superman, you know, he doesn't like to solve any crime or do anything on Wednesday nights. You know why? Why? I do, but I'm going to let you do it. Uh, that's because he goes to his uh, weekly crypto night. Oh. oh, I know. <laughs> it's bad. All right, Ben, what do you got? Okay, so one of the scams that we've covered quite often are about those texts you get it, uh, that say, oh, you've got a delivery. Yeah, click here or your delivery's been delayed. Click here to fix it. 
that does, they've been popular for the past, I don't know, a couple of years. Usually those are kind of easy to spot and avoid, but there's a new type of delivery scam that it actually qualifies as clever. No. Yes. yes. So in this case, you'll get an email and it appears to come from UPS and it says something like your package has experienced an exception, which indicates some kind of unforeseen event. Anyway, so to get it back on track, it wants you to download and print out an invoice to pick up whatever it is at a UPS store. Here's where <laughs> it gets interesting. When you hover over the link, as you should, you'll see the real UPS URL. Oh, gosh, you're kidding, right? Yeah, click on it, and it actually takes you to the real UPS website. But you'll see a message that says your download's about to begin. It downloads a, a Word document, and if you open that, none of the words show up. And so it says you have to click on something like Enable Content, which when you do that, it downloads other files, which could be malware or anything else. And then that, so that's where they get you. Yeah. So, and, you know, according to uh, uh, the Twitter user who discovered it and uh, Bleeping Computer, here's how it happened. Hackers exploited some kind of scripting flaw on the UPS site so they could add their own code and, like, you know, basically manipulate it to bring in their own Word documents and trick people. Okay. You know what? This is clever with a capital C. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it truly is. And so so what's the workaround? So, Or the bottom line, really, is that if you get a text message that claims that it's a UPS delivery or anything else, yeah. it's not. Yeah. just if you, if you are expecting something, go to the site directly. Now, the good news about this one is that UPS has fixed the flaw. The bad news is that now that you know, these hackers are aware they can do this. You can expect this type of phishing from any kind of site that has a similar flaw. All right, so UPS has fixed the problem on their end, but bottom line, more or less story, other sites can fall victim to this too. So don't click on links, unsolicited emails, texts. Uh, don't open any attachments. We've got all the details on this at commando.com. All right, so my news is kind of crazy news. Now, have you ever been tempted to buy those popular blue light blocking glasses on Amazon. Have you ever seen those? I mean, you know, they, they claim that they're going to soothe and rest your eyes after a full day of just staring into your computer screen. Your life will be better. Your thighs will be thinner. And, and of course, you're <laughs> going to be a better cook and better in the bedroom and all that other great stuff. Well, new research says that the answer is both yes and no. If you're asking, will they rest my eyes? Well, from almost every ophthalmologist you can find, the answer is a resounding no. Womp, Aww. womp. I know it's sad, isn't it? The Wall Street Journal actually said they're snake oil. But if you're asking, well, I like the blue light blocking glasses, and well, the blue light blocking glasses make me look cool, you're going to hear a lot of people that say yes. Like, as a matter of fact, today I was on the phone with my attorney, and I was looking at John, and I said, John, are those blue light blocking glasses? And he's like, Yes. And I said, so, John, do they really help you? Now, he went to Harvard Law School and all these other places. And I explained to him that it was just snake oil. And then he told me that he got them free at Costco. <laughs> so I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> uh, now, they do say that if you put them on, you might notice an extra bit of sharpness and clarity in your vision. The doctors say it's mostly psychological. But I guess if you want to give them a try. Now, think about this. Microsoft had the HoloLens. Google had Google Glass. Now, what about Apple, right? If Apple had invented augmented reality glasses, and they are coming out soon, I heard they're going to be called eyebrows. <laughs> oh, Ben? I have, a little, I have a little vision tip, actually. I went to the ophthalmologist a couple weeks ago, and there was a sign on the wall, and it said to actually rest your eyes every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. So just taking your you know, eyes off of looking really close and looking out into the distance. So if you two see me kind of staring longingly, that's why. You know, I've noticed that. I thought you were like zoning out. I was like, where is nope. Allie? Come on back, Al. Come on back. <laughs> that leads me to my next story, digital detox. Okay. Everybody's been talking about digital detox, right? I mean, that you're tired of staring at the screen because of the pandemic. We've got all these products and services that are promising that if you put the, the device down for just a moment, that your life, of course, like the blue glasses, is going to be better. As a matter of fact, I've been using iOS 15, and it has this new focus mode. So it's the whole idea is that you'll put the phone down and nobody will bother you. So taking a break from tech, it's often sold as a way to boost your overall well-being and help you fight sleep disorders, anxiety, and depression. 
But research out this past week that they found a 24 hour period of smartphone abstinence had absolutely no effect on your mood. Absolutely no effect on your anxiety, because what they found is that people, when they are not using it, they are anxious because they're afraid of what they're missing. Right. So have you guys ever tried a digital detox? It doesn't work for me to do the whole like, you know, don't touch your phone all weekend, that kind of thing. For me, doing something a little more balanced, you know, I'm not going to check it all day. I'm going to check it a few times. I I find that that's a better way to not fall into that. Oh, my gosh, what am I missing? What emails? What texts? What calls? And you know, get a little time away from my phone. I have withdrawals thinking about it. <laughs> not, really. not really. No, I mean, it's like, we, I know when I go camping, it's like I still take all the, the tech stuff, but I do try to make it a point when I'm doing that or, you know, it's it's supposed to be some kind of low key evening or whatever that I do set it aside mindfully and that I try not to check it often. But no, I I, I don't recall a time where I've ever just, you know, put it down for Solid hours or days. Well, the only like place where I was not able to use my phone, and I was not able to use a phone for six days, no technology for six days. And when I thought that there was a signal in place, I went to the stern of the boat because I heard that was the best place. And I held my phone up in the air and I got one bar was in the Galapagos Islands. Oh, wow. Oh, and it was for a while, the first couple of days, it was like, wow, this is great. This is wonderful. And then after like day two, you're like, oh, gosh, what am I going <laughs> to do? And I was going to start a digital detox program. And I was going to call it the Hokey Pokey because you do the Hokey Pokey and you turn yourself around. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> uh, come on, work with me on it. Work with me. All right. Coming up next. We have some really great digital life hacks that you're not going to want to miss. And also the weird news that we found online. Ben has a great product review. Uh, ben, is it another battery thing? Tell me no. It doesn't have a battery in it at all. Okay, that means that it has something to do with power. It does. Power pass through. And best of all, you don't want to miss coming up right next is... You choose the fake news. It's America's favorite podcast game show sensation, but you have to be smart enough to beat it. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh, brought to you by thecurrentnewsletter.com. Tech news and tips you can use right now. No ads. It's absolutely free. Sign up while you're thinking about it. Head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, this is part of the podcast where we like to pass along some great tips, things that you can use right now. Like, for example, have you ever watched a YouTube video to get the steps to do something and the guy or gal just goes way too fast or worse, too slow? Well, you may not know this, but YouTube generates a hidden written transcript for every single video that's uploaded to its website. So this way you can read exactly what the person in the video is saying. But if you want to copy it and print it, you can do that too. So this is an incredibly handy tip, like when you're getting like DIY instructions or some type of steps to getting something done. So you don't have to like start and stop the video to find that certain spot where it wasn't so clear like what you should do. So to see a video's transcript, you just open the video on YouTube. You press the three dots, sometimes called the more option, and then that's right underneath the video's title. You choose transcript from the drop down menu. Now, there is a little caveat. The only time you won't get a transcript, if the video's owner disabled it, but that hardly happens. So that was my little fun tip that everybody can use. Ben, you're up next. This is one of my favorite things because the neighborhood I live in has mountains on three sides. And because of that, whatever other factors, my cell signal isn't always that great. You know, one or two bars max. You know, cell cellular data isn't an issue at home. You just connect to Wi-Fi. But for phone calls, you, you might as well go back to a landline with the quality. That's where Wi-Fi calling comes in. And it's just like it sounds. Instead of calls happening over a cellular network, you get to use your home's Internet connection instead. Uh, it's not built into every phone out there, but just about every modern phone has it. And the best part, it's already included free in your plan. Yeah, I know. So if you have an iPhone, go to settings, tap on phone. Look for Wi-Fi calling and toggle on Wi-Fi calling. That's it. No more dropped calls. Android instructions can vary a little bit based on the manufacturer, but for most of them, tap the phone icon on the home screen, then the three-dot icon and settings. Wi-Fi calling's right there. Toggle it on. If you missed any of that, we have it all at commando.com along with troubleshooting in case it's not working. Now, one, one other thing to know, though, 
Uh, the FCC requires that you register a physical emergency address to ensure that uh, first responders know how to find you if you called 911 using Wi-Fi calling. And we have directions for that, too. Yeah, I mean, that's really important. And so many people are totally getting rid of a landline. You know, there's also this really great product, just speaking about that, Ben. And I know that we may have a link to it somewhere on the website. But so many people, they want that, like, good old-fashioned handset, right? I mean, but and but you don't really have that with a smartphone. So if you are sitting there, you're like, ah, I wish I could have a handset tied to my smartphone so it looks and feels like a real phone, is that you can buy them from companies like VTech. That'd be a great gift, too. Now, Allie, you're going to, what, fix crappy internet in one phone call? What? Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, my best friend was complaining about her internet speed. Okay, they don't stream a lot. They're, you know, not on video chats very often, so they don't need it to be great. But I'm talking like her internet was at like 25 megabytes per second. It was not good. Yeah. Her plan was supposed to go up to 50, but no, it wasn't anywhere close. And so she was complaining about it. And I said, all right, here's a little bit of advice before you call. One, you need to do some speed tests. So my favorite is from Ookla. Just, you know, Google speed test. It's usually the first result. And you don't want to just do one. You want to, you know, seem really informed when you call your internet company. So do a couple, do it over a few different days, get yourself some good data. And then do a little research on other options in your area and find out, okay, what are the other companies charging? So that way, once you call, you're totally armed with info. So she called. She said, hey, these are my speed test ratings. This is how much I could pay with a different company. What are you going to do about it? And they upgraded her to the next plan. Now her speed like tripled um, and she didn't have to pay any more money. Oh, nice. Now, one one little thing we need to do about this speed test site is that if you go to speedtest.com, you don't want to go there. You want to go to no. speedtest.net, or if you prefer, you can go to fast.com. And that's Netflix's. just makes it easier for people to remember. You go to fast.com or speedtest.net. Okay, I got one more. Just one more. Okay. Do you like to dictate things, or do you rather type? It depends. I... I like to dictate sometimes, but man, I always get weird words put in there. I, I prefer typing. Do you? It's just easy. Yeah, it's just easy for me. I like, you know, the punctuation and everything. Well, I've just noticed on the weekend radio show is that I begin a lot of people are calling and saying like, hey, I am ready to write the next great American novel, but they don't want to sit there and type the whole thing. So they always ask me, what type of software do we need? Okay. Well, you know, it used to be, you'd say, you know, Dragon Naturally Speaking, that's the one that's out there. That's the one that really works. But here's the deal. You already have dictation software on your PC or Mac. It just takes some time for your Windows and Mac to get used to your voice. You need to speak clearly and it's best to use the mic on your earbuds, but if you want to include punctuation, you need to say something like, quote, I love tech refresh, exclamation mark, right? End quote. Uh, the free dictation software on Windows, you press the Windows key and the letter H. I don't know why it's the letter H. It seems like it should be like, I don't know, some other letter that had to do with dictation. <laughs> and on a Mac, it's under system preferences, keyboard and dictation. So once again, Windows key, the letter H on a Mac, it's under system preferences, keyboard and dictation. So now on Tech Refresh, it's time for us to play You Choose the Fake News, right? Now, what's really interesting about fake news is that we see it all over. So on Tech Refresh, each of us takes a turn and we tell you about two real tech headlines and one fake. So we're going to present to you three news headlines that happen in the tech world. Two are real, one is fake, and this week... Allie, it's your turn to stump everybody. I am so ready. Okay, first headline. Man who appeared on Nirvana's Nevermind album as a baby sues Ban for child pornography. We all know this cover. It's iconic. The little naked baby swimming underwater toward a dollar bill. That baby is now a 30-year-old man, Spencer Eldon, and he is suing members of Nirvana and lots of other people saying that this was child porn that he is now forever tied to. Right. Number two. Subway is testing a faster way to make sandwiches and workers are worried. Okay, you've probably paid at a fast casual restaurant at one of those kiosks or ordered through there. Okay, Subway is going further. Has your food ever been made by a robot? Well, maybe if you visited one of the 10 Subway restaurants piloting new tech. Instead of your sandwich going down a line with a person, it actually goes down the slow little conveyor belt and then, yes, little robot arms reach up to open the bread, lay out the meat, the cheese, the veggies, 
And then a human takes over to do, you know, the mustard, the mayonnaise, whatever. Number three, new AI cologne comes in a smartphone activated robot shaped bottle. A French fashion house is called Paco Rabanne. They've got a new line of men's fragrances and they are the smartest colognes around. Each one is in the shiny robot shaped bottle and there's an NFC chip in the head. Those are like the same kind of tags that you use to do contactless payments. So you touch it with your phone, you get style guides, filters, playlists, all kinds of digital stuff. And yes, AI, because AI helped formulate the actual cologne. So perfumers use different algorithms to find the perfect ingredients to make the emotional effect that they wanted. They say it is an energizing flash of lemon. Oh, this is tough, Allie. So two of those are real. One is fake. So that's right. So two are real. One is fake. Now, Ben, you just got back from camping. So let's have you have first dibs at it. Okay. Nirvana, baby. I want to say is real. So going to rule that one out as being fake. And I agree with that because the Nirvana baby is now 30 and he's saying like, wow, I could get some quick cash out of this. (laughs) Two and a half million bucks. Okay. Why work? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next two are a little more difficult. Um, but you know what? I'm going to go with my first thought, and I'm going to say that Subway is also real, and that the uh, AI cologne is the fake headline. Now, but there is a Paco Raban. So. Sometimes you have to throw in those uh, you know, the names. Am I just good at research, or... What? So, Ben, is that your final answer? <laughs> yes, I think so. I'm agreeing with Ben. Allie, the big reveal. The fake story. Subway no testing way. robots. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's not real. Sorry, guys, I made that up. Uh, there is a restaurant trying out robotic fryers, which is pretty crazy, but no, Subway's not doing that. The You were totally right, Kim. This guy is suing 17 different people over this album cover for $150,000 each. That is $2.5 million. Um, The best part of this, for the 15th and 25th anniversaries, he recreated the covers. He was, like, into this. Oh, was he really? Okay, and now he's crying foul? Really? He is. Okay, he found some lawyer that said we could make some quick cash. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Uh, If you want that AI cologne... It will cost you 75 or $100, depending on, on how big of a bottle you want. I always remember, like, Paco Rabanne never really smelt that good. I mean, for some reason. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like when you go through, like, Macy's or Nordstrom's and yeah. in Saks, they assault you with the perfume. And you're like, get away from me. And I remember, like, once I got it, I was like, ooh, what is that smell? Awful. <laughs> well, now it's going to be like, you don't know what you want. AI knows what you want. Exactly. (laughs) So stay right where you are. Coming up next, the weirdest things that we saw online this past week here on Tech Refresh. Welcome back to Tech Refresh, brought to you by TheCurrentNewsletter.com. Tech news and tips you can use right now. No ads, it's free. Sign up at TheCurrentNewsletter.com. All right, Allie, you're up first. What was the weirdest thing that you saw online this week, aside from the whole Nirvana thing? (laughs) <laughs> Mine is a story of star-crossed lovers, um, <laughs> and I'll lead in this way. So a woman in Belgium has just been told she can't visit a zoo there anymore because she has been visiting a certain chimp way too often. She has gone once a week for four years to visit this guy. It's a 38-year-old chimp. His name is Cheetah, and she says that they love each other. Uh, they blow kisses. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> smile and wave at each other. And the zookeeper said he can't bond with the other chimps because all he does is hang out there with her. And so they told her she can't come back anymore. Uh, Her actual quote was, I love that animal and he loves me. She said that their love is a real relationship. She called it an affair. Um, I just, this is a weird one. She needs to find a dating app. See, now, thanks to the Internet, we find all these great stories. I mean, we would have known about the woman and the chimp and the love affair. I mean, um, the Internet is amazing. How about you, Ben? I can't beat that one. But, you know, the weirdest one I saw is just it deals with the NFTs. And I don't know about you guys. I'm just I'm kind of over the whole NFT trend. 
I know it's still going on. You've got cards, you know, sports cards, memes, all this stuff selling for millions of dollars. Well, the weirdest headline I've seen this week, it deals with uh, Ether Rock, which is a collection of about 100 images of clip art rocks, each with a slightly different color tint. Well, this week of those 100, Ether Rock number 42 sold. Now, keep in mind, this is a picture of a rock that was sourced from free clip art. How much do you think it sold for? Okay, it, okay. I saw a picture of this. It looks like it looks like a five year old drew it. Yeah. yeah, it looks like somebody made it in paint. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Yeah, and how much does it sell for? Million bucks. Kim. Yeah, I was gonna. Well, I, a million. I'd say a million. Close enough. Uh, One point three oh. million for a free yeah. clip art rock. In a kind of red, okay, red. Okay, how do we energy. how do we cash in on this craze? I mean, what are we doing? We're sitting here doing a podcast called Tech Refresh. I mean, can we 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 could be making so much more money? I mean, we had Pictionary today as a company virtual that event. Was fun. Oh my gosh, we should have screenshot all of your drawings, Kim, and we could have minted these. And man, we missed made out. millions, millions. Gosh, millions. it's crazy. All right, so my weird news because you know I only look at tech stuff. This is the headline. Changing your iPhone's location to France will make it run faster. Have you ever heard of such a thing? No. Total clickbait. Would you have read the story? Yes, you would have. Both of you would have. We'd be like, what is going on? Well, a Chinese phone blog claims that if you switch your region to France, it's going to improve your iPhone speeds by up to 5%. They say it works on older iPhones. It's linked to a string of lawsuits against Apple in the U.S. and Europe. Is that Apple secretly throttled the performance of the iPhone 6 and 7? Do you remember that? So that this way we would be forced to buy replacement phones and batteries. So Apple, of course, denied it. But according to this Chinese blog, Giz China, they say that if you switch your handset's location to France, it's going to boost the performance because Apple was fined by the French government. But there's a whole caveat with this, that if you want to change your iPhone's location, you have to tap your name, go into media purchases. You have to delete everything, reinstall everything, uh, get a new phone, credit card. I mean, SIM card. I mean, it's just like this whole thing. So, yeah. So I read the story about changing your iPhone's location to France to make it run faster. So I read it for everybody so you don't have to. Um, It doesn't really work. Mm, Not worth all the work. Mm-mm. All right, Al, so what's trending over at commando.com? Oh, we've got some good stuff. Millions of iPhone users are going to lose access to Outlook. Find out if you're one of them. I'm not going to give it away here. Go to the site. Uh, how to find your lost phone, even if it's on silent. This is a really handy tip. There are ways to do it for iPhone and Android. So if there's nobody around to call you or you left your phone on silent, it's buried in the couch, whatever. We'll show you how to do it. I'm really glad, Allie, that you said that because I saw on Twitter people were responding when you put that up as a link like, well, why don't you just call it, Dubby? (laughs) (laughs) Because that doesn't always work, you jerks. You know, people online, I always like when they always get like this attitude, right? I mean, like like Myrna. I called her out on the show last weekend because, you know, go find an iPhone expert, Kim Commando, you know. Myrna doesn't realize you've had an iPhone forever. Yeah, that's okay. All right, what else we got on the site? We have some really smart ways to use little Bluetooth trackers, so Apple AirTags or Tiles. Uh, Kim, you use one for your dog, Abby, don't you? Yep, and I put one in Barry's butt, so he always can always find him too. (laughs) (laughs) But I think that I think the best use though is really honestly is luggage, because you know you go on a trip and maybe your bag is. Misplaced. Like, for example, I went to Europe a couple of years ago and British Airways could not find our luggage. And so we went to Heathrow and then we went to Paris. So we're in Paris, like with no underwear, nothing. I mean, because they with no luggage. And so we go down and buy enough supplies. And I'm on the phone, of course, with the PR people saying, like, where is my luggage? Where's my luggage? And so they deliver breakfast to the hotel with the Daily Mail newspaper. And on the front page of the Daily Mail, they're doing this whole story about how the computer glitched in the backlog of luggage. And I see my luggage (gasps) right there on the cover of the Daily Mail newspaper. And so I call the PR person up and said, you can't find my bag. Look at the front page of the (laughs) Daily Mail newspaper. Well, I got her luggage a couple of days later, which was, you know, okay. I was happy to have it. But when the luggage is coming down that chute, 
right? And you're going to collect your luggage, you know, like, oh, I can go have a beer or I should be standing here and fighting my way right in the front. <laughs> And then one more really helpful tip, big tech companies, they all have this dossier of information on you, right? They collect all this stuff and you have a profile and we will show you how to find yours for all the big tech companies. And of course, we never want you to ghost us on social media because you can find us where let's all start at the beginning. Facebook.com slash Kim Commando. Kim Commando. Okay. Instagram.com. Anyone? Kim Commando. Anyone? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Twitter.com slash anyone? Uh Kim Commando? Oh, you guys are I knew it. so smart. So wherever you are on social media, make sure that you also follow us there. Stay right where you are because coming up next, we have a product review from Ben that you definitely never want to miss. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh brought to you by thecurrentnewsletter.com. Tech news and tips you can use right now. It's free, no ads. Sign up while you're thinking about it. Head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, so Ben, you're back from vacay. Tell us where you went and how many gadgets that you brought with you. Uh, I was in the San Francisco Bay Area for a few days. I brought all kinds of chargers, of course. Uh, definitely some batteries, which I will not be discussing on <laughs> on the podcast today. However, uh, one thing I did bring with me, because I, I brought my laptop too, uh, was very helpful. And it ties into remote work because I, don't, I this gets me thinking about everybody who's new to working from home and go back to March of last year. And you know, the thought was, who would have thought that now we'd still, a lot of people would still be working from home. And they're still just like, I can get by with my laptop or just my basic desktop computer with my single monitor. Uh, no, you know, you don't know how long it's going to be. So why not get that second monitor? Why not get a couple of those extra peripherals? And that's what's great about a USB-C hub. Now, you get those, you know, there are so many to choose from, so many different features, everything else. The one that I'm talking about today is called the Anchor Power Expand 4-in-1. Uh, this one is different because it's got the HDMI port, so you can connect a monitor or two if you already have one on the computer, uh, USB, like an extra mouse, whatever else, pass through charging. But the coolest feature is it also has a 256 gigabyte SSD built into it too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. It's all in one solution. So, you know, you have a laptop. Okay, so you can hook a second monitor up to it probably natively. But if you wanted a third one or if you wanted to, you know, take it outside and on the patio or whatever, hook this stuff up. And if you're running out of space, you've got this, you know, nifty SSD that you can move work files over to. So, you know, if you're working on a personal computer. I got to say, Ben, you're the only person I've ever met who has set up like a complete workstation on a patio. He's like out there oh with gosh. it's three crazy. monitors. It is. But, you know, the thing that, that you need to always remember when you're setting up all this stuff, especially when you're camping, Ben, is that there there is an app that will tell you if you're getting too much sun because it looked like you had like a chemical peel going on in your forehead. What was <laughs> happening with that? Oh, man. Well, OK. So, you know, in Phoenix, we're just used to the heat. But when I was in San Francisco and it was on average 30 degrees cooler, I wasn't taking into account that the sun is still shining. <laughs> and you don't feel the damage it's doing. And by that point, yeah, it was too late. My, the worst burn I ever had, I, my my forehead had never swollen before. <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah, you had a big was, head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bigger, yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I got we. I totally got distracted. Okay, the Anchor Power Expand 4-in-1 SSD USB-C hub. Wow. Okay, so pros and cons, real quick. Pros and cons? Uh, it is great if you just if you're looking for a basic, you know, at home work setup for a few things. It's not so great for power users. Like I've got like four monitors hooked up and uh, you know all kinds of extra gadgets. So it's not good for that. It's also great for travel because it's so small. You can just toss it in your laptop bag and take it with you wherever you go. The other good thing, a uh, hundred bucks, and you can sometimes catch it. You know, on on Amazon, you can sometimes catch it. Uh, for as little as 80. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? That's, you know what? So how many Ben heads do you give it? That gets a solid four. Ooh, Ooh. and why not five? Why I not five use, out of five Ben heads? I prefer having more ports. You know, I like the eight ports, the 10 ports. This is a, this is a, it'll get you by. It's probably all you need. I go in excess. 
The translation there is for normal people. <laughs> it's it great. <laughs> totally awesome. <laughs> but for those of us, who, but for the, the, the bona fide geeks of the week, mm, four, four out, out of five. five. Yes. You know, I'm glad you didn't talk about batteries because sometimes there's just a lot of pluses and minuses. Oh. <laughs> Mm, I know. I'm sorry. All right, Ben. So what are you reviewing next? This way it keeps everybody on the edge of their seat. I am going to be reviewing smart floodlights next week. Ooh. Pretty cool. Millions of colors. It, uh, it can sync with your music. That's all I'll say. How many ports? How many monitors can you plug into? <laughs> oh no monitors. So that takes please don't opinion, ask right him there. anything. <laughs> don't, don't, make it, don't make us go there. Please. Please. Okay, so since you were talking about camping in the outdoors, let me just leave you with this thought. A lonely fisherman decided to use his internet instead of a regular fishing net. All he caught were catfish. Ha! Hey, Allie and Ben, thanks for being here. Of course. Always. And we all want to remind you to make sure that you rate, review, you subscribe, you follow this podcast. And also, hey, sign up for The Current Newsletter. Head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. Once again, that's thecurrentnewsletter.com. I have a goal of getting to like 150,000 subscribers. And so you can help us out by just going to thecurrentnewsletter.com. Even if you don't read it, just subscribe to it, <laughs> thecurrentnewsletter.com. And don't forget, 24-7, you can find us at commando.com. A-O-M-A-N-D-O dot com. See you next week. <laughs>